good afternoon. Uh, I'm Michael, Engineer Michael C. Basis from Papua University. So I'm here to present and give you a little bit of discussion about what is a switch gear. No? So switch gear. Switch gear is a composition of a power power plant or a substation. So a switch gear is uh, actually a protection. of your substation. Of course, a substation must have two important parts. First part is the operations, where the operations have its transformers and other devices that steps down or step up voltage or even acts as a switch and acts as a uh, emitter or voltage emitter. But a substation needs also protection, which relies on switch gears. Okay, from the word itself, we have a switch and a gear. Switch is an electromechanical device that closes or changes the uh, connection of the circuit. So a switch can be manually, you know, uh, manually used. And of course, a gear is an equipment that is needed on a particular activity. Now, from the word itself, a switch gear you know, is a switch, you know, and a gear is an equipment. So, in a protection, uh, <coughs> protection scheme, a uh, switch gear is more about you know, a switch, a relay, circuit breaker and a bus board. So it means it means that you have these equipments to protect the substation. So switch and appear. Okay. Okay next. So in the some definitions on some other books. A switch gear is a group of electrical devices, which I discussed a, a while ago, no? that can be used during normal and, of course, at abnormal condition. The abnormal condition here means you have faults. Also, it is essentially it is intended for switching and, of course, interrupting uh, both operating and fault conditions. And a switch gear is also no, consists of a switch, fuse, circuit breaker, relay, and even a bus board. Okay, thus, uh, in general, a switch gear is an apparatus that is used for switching and protecting the electrical circuit and equipment in a substation. It is also uh, notice here that a switch gear have also different types. So, first is a low voltage switch gear, and second is a high voltage switch gear. So, switch gear is like a switch in your home, it's like you have a tumbler and an ordinary fuse in series, which is used for lighting and other if office equipment, which has low voltage applications. While number two is for high voltage, it uses a high rupturing capacity fuse. So, it is in conjunction with the switch and can be used. Actually, for low voltage application, this is less than 1,000 volts. For a high voltage, you have more than 1,000 volts. So, this is actually the range. For low voltage, you have less than 1,000. For a high voltage, you have 1,000 volts. Okay. So, as we have discussed, a switch gear can be an outdoor type and an indoor type as well. So, it is also the same thing with a substation, where in an outdoor type means an air insulated substation, no? air insulated. While this type, for the indoor type, it is, of course, no, a closed or a gas insulated. So, it is also the same thing with substations. You know, you have an AIS, 
and at JS, or in JS is five times the area of the air insulated type. As we have discussed from our previous slides, a switch gear is composed of the following equipment, and these are the following switch, fuse, circuit breaker, relay, and password. Now we will discuss each one of them. So a switch no, is an electromechanical device for the open process of changing the connection of a certain equipment. It can be full load or no load in the circuit. But it is not intended no, for interrupting any kind of fault simply because a switch is just for connection changing or even no, open or closing a no, particular circuit. A switch can be also uh, uh, different types, no? So first, we have an air brake switch. So it is designed to open a circuit under full load or an under load. And because you are you know, opening a circuit under a load, there are special arcing horns. As we have discussed, no? Arcing horns are special, no? Special type of interrupting equipment, excuse me, no? Wherein it is connected in series to prevent arcing phenomena and generally used for outdoor no, for circuits in terms of medium voltage capacity. Okay, an isolator switch can be known as a knife switch. So it provides an isolation in terms to open a circuit under no load and main purpose is to isolate one portion of the circuit from the other intended to be open while the current is not or flowing or flowing rather to the line. So meaning it's like a, a low voltage switch which is designed that will not open under no load conditions. Okay, all switches. All switches are uh, of course switches which are insulated by oil. Usually transformer oil, pyranol or polyvinyl will provide and of course these switches are used for high voltages capacity and large current. As you can see from the figure, the oil switches here is in conjunction with the fuse cut out. This is the fuse, your main protection of your uh, of your distribution line. Okay. This is also the same thing if you have you know, your substation. The oil switches are the ones who are switching no, the uh, high voltage capacity and large capacities in terms of substation uh, locations. Okay, as I have discussed, uh, fuse can be a distribution cut out. So essentially, this is an electrical device no, connected always in series in order the equipment to be protected no, and again for the excessive currents. As we have discussed a while ago, switches cannot interrupt any fault, but the fuses will interrupt the fault. And this is your distribution cutout, this fuse here. So when there's a fault, this distribution cutout will go down. You know? So it will be disconnected to the circuit. Okay, next in line is circuit breakers. Circuit breakers, the only difference with fuses is fuses can be you know, can be manually or automatically rather, automatically uh, open a circuit, but a circuit breaker can do both manually and automatically. And of course, circuit breaker are for larger excessive currents, and it fun function as a detection and interrupting device. Okay, the uh, uh, typical type is an oil circuit breaker. An oil circuit breaker composed of an oil to insulation, no? for insulating the main body, and of course for uh, distinct extinguishing the fold. Now, the operation of an oil circuit breaker is very simple. You have a moving contact and a fixed contact. No? So, if there is a fold, the moving contact will go downwards and there will be a turbulence of oil that will produce during arcing. And thus, the transformer oil no, will produce a waste material which is an hydrogen gas. That will go to the air cushions so that it will not affect okay, the pressure inside 
because we already know hydrogen gas is an explosive gas. So the oil level, of course, will change, you know, will drop off, but the pressure of the uh, exhaust gases because of the arcing will go to the air pollution. The operation is so simple, as long as you have your relay, of course you have a relay here, that will send a signal to move the moving contact downwards in order to interrupt the flow. Okay, now this is what I tried to say a while ago. Uh, there is the arcing that is trapped you know, between the moving contact and the uh, fixed contact. And that turbulence of oil is the bubble, bubble of oil vapors that will go to the air cushions. Okay, let's go to relays. Relays are the main intelligence of the power system. And of course, a device that detects the fault and of course, initiate the contacts of operation of the circuit breaker. Okay, let's go move forward to the parts of a relay. Okay, the relay has three primary function, uh, primary parts. Okay, first you have the primary winding of the relay. Second, the second, secondary winding and the tripping circuit. Now, the primary winding will be at this location here. You have your CT or current transformer. Okay, how it operates? Very simple. If there is a fault here at the distribution or the far side, of course, you have here a fault current. I could say F. Okay, I F primary. It will go to the CT ratio or the current transformer rather. The current transformer will act as a transducer. As we know, a transducer is a device that steps down you know, any, any, uh, any voltage or current in the power electronics in a certain level so that it can act assert your coil winding here. So you are your secondary winding here, secondary winding of the fault, IF secondary, has a value where it can operate the secondary winding of the current transformer. So this IFS here will activate the tripping coil of this secondary winding. So it will go down. Now, if this no, uh, secondary winding operates the relay coil, so this tripping circuit will be energized. And thus, the battery will give, supply, uh, will give power to the uh, tripping coil sends the signal to the circuit breaker, your fixed contact will be here, then it will go in the side, you know, downwards, to open the circuit at the main track or the backbone. Actually, the, uh, the coordination time interval of what I've discussed you know, from the primary winding to the secondary to the tripping circuit is from 0.25 to 0.6 seconds. A typical value of 0.25 is will do for coordination because that 0.25 seconds you must activate all of the parts so that it can open the faulted line. So the relay, this is the uh, parts of the mechanical relay. Mechanical relay because you have mechanical parts in order to do this. Okay, next. Uh, this is a type of a distribution feeder, which is uh, a rather distribution feeder protection relay, which is connected you know, in a gun on a, in a per phase basis. So this is a DFPR. So the last part is a bus bar. So bus bar actually is an electrical conductor, loop conductor that uses a common point connection. So the bus bar is derived from a Latin word. So bus means an omni and then the bar is collector of things. So this is based from the word omnibus. So means collector of things. Okay. So in this case uh, a bus bar can be a copper or a rod of involved tubes that operates at constant voltage with, of course, a constant frequency. So these are your bus bars here, and this is your bus bar that operating on your substation. Well, you have four because uh, it is also, you expect that neutral, no, neutral uh, 
pass must be also this in the uh, vicinity of the in connecting circuits. And then, though the switch here, as we have discussed, you have an indoor type and an outdoor type, or low voltage and high voltage applications. So I think that will be the end of our discussion. Thank you for listening. Bye.